Today's math lesson is from Unit 1, Lesson 1. Today, we are going to practice different ways to represent addition and subtraction. You might see some familiar items that you saw back in first grade in this first lesson of second grade. Do you recognize this? Have you ever seen this before? If you said yes, then you probably saw it in first grade. This is called a math mountain. Math mountains are tools that we can use to show addition and subtraction. There is one thing missing from our math mountain, and that is the numbers. On a math mountain, there are three different numbers. Two numbers at the bottom and one number at the top. The top number is the highest number. In my class, we often call the top number the king of the mountain, and only the largest number gets to be the king of the mountain. Let's take a look at an example of some numbers. Maybe at the bottom, I have two, and four. Using my touch points, I could say four, five, six. So four plus two is six. Since six is the biggest number, it goes at the top of the math mountain. Now all three of these numbers on the math mountain have specific names. In first grade, you might have called the two bottom numbers partners. Those are great words for those two bottom numbers. In second grade, we are going to use another name along with partners. You may call them partners, or in second grade, we are also going to call them add-ins. I remember add-ins because it has the word add in it. And we add our two add-ins to get to our king or our biggest number at the top of the mountain. So add-ins is not too tricky to remember. Now the top number can also be called two different words. In first grade, you might have called it the total. You add your partners to get your total. There's another second grade word that we are also going to use, and that's the word sum, S-U-M, sum. Our sum, or our total, is our biggest number. We take our two add-ins to add to get to our sum. That is our math mountain have a math mountain, usually one of the numbers on the math mountain is missing. That's the first piece that we need to solve on our math mountain. Let's look over at the first of our math mountains. Now, when I look, I see I have four and four as my add-ins or my partners. Now, in order to find my king of my math mountain or my sum or total, I'm going to need to add my two add-ins to find that top number. You can do this by counting up or if you know how to use touch points, touch points is a great strategy. I can use touch points by going like this. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Four plus four is eight. That's a doubles equation. Four and four added up gives me my sum or my total of eight. Let's go over to the second math mountain on this page. Now, when I look at this math mountain, I already have my biggest number my sum or my total. It's already at the top for me. 
The number that I'm missing is down at the bottom, shown by this mystery box. That's our missing number. Now, I do have one of my add ends, which is three, but I need to find my other add end. Do you know how we could possibly do that? Well, I know that I can't add 10 plus 3. That would give me 10, 11, 12, 13. And if I put 13 down there, then my math mountain doesn't make sense because 13 is bigger than 10. So that's not going to work. I cannot have a number bigger than the king. So that means that I need to figure out what number plus three is going to give me 10. Now I could do this in a few ways. I could start at three and count up to 10, or I could start at 10 and subtract three. You know, I think I might do the subtraction. Three is not a very big number, and I know that I can use my touch points to subtract. Watch how I do that. 10, 9, 8, 7. So I got 7 using my touch points. Let's just double check. Let's add 7 plus 3 to see if we get 10. 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect. So no matter where my missing number is, I can either add to get my top number or I could subtract to get my bottom number. Let's go ahead and practice with a full math mountain. Now on this math mountain, I see that I have both of my add ends, so that's good. I know that I need to add those two numbers to get my sum or my total at the top. I'm going to use touch points to add four, five, six, seven. Four plus three equals seven. Now you may be asking, why are there all these little lines over here on the right hand side? We have not done anything with those yet. Well, along with just finding the missing number of the math mountain, we can also use these numbers to make equations. Equations are made with addition and subtraction on the math mountain. I personally think that the addition equations are the easiest, so I like to start with addition. We can make two addition equations using our math mountain. Let's look at our math mountain and see what numbers we could add together. Did you hear that key word that I said? Add. What are the two numbers that we would add? Our add ends. We know that those are the numbers we add to get our total. So let's use our two add ends. For my first equation, I could add three plus four. And what did that give me? Seven. Very nice. Now, do you have any ideas for my next addition equation? I don't have any other numbers to add, but I wonder if I could change the order. Instead of three plus four, could I maybe add four plus three? Let's see if that works. Four plus three, and that will still give me seven. So I didn't need any new numbers. All I did was flip-flop the two numbers in my adding equation. Oh, that was pretty easy. Now next, I need to work on my two subtracting equations. Now, when we subtract, I have a little story to tell you. 
the king of the mountain loves subtraction. He loves subtraction and he always wants to go first when we're going to do subtraction. He's a little bit greedy and he wants to be first in line when we do subtraction. So when we subtract, our king of the mountain wants to come first. There he is, our king, number seven. Hmm, first I have seven. I wonder if I do seven minus four. What's my last missing number for this equation? Three. I'm still using the same three numbers in our math mountain. Now it looks like we have one more subtracting equation. And who comes first for our subtracting equation? The king. He loves subtraction. So seven's going to come first again, but I can't do seven minus four this time. What do I need to do? Seven minus three. It's almost like a little flip flop again. They're just on different sides. We'll sign. Try another example of a math mountain with its four equations. On this math mountain, 10 is our king of the mountain, and we have four at the bottom for one of our add-ends. We are missing the other add-end. So four plus something equals 10. Now I'm going to count down on this math mountain using my touch points, 10, nine, eight, seven, six. So my missing number is six. Let's go ahead and make our four equations to finish this up. Now I need two numbers to add to give me my total. What two numbers do I add again? Four plus six. Four plus six is 10. Now, do you remember that little trick on how to do one more addition equation? That's right. I'm going to flip flop my numbers. Instead of four plus six, let's do six plus four. That also gives us 10. Now we are moving over to subtraction. Oh, second graders, do you remember who loves subtraction the most? Who always wants to come first in our subtraction? You are right. It's the king of the math mountain. He loves subtraction and he wants to come first. So when we subtract, our king gets to go first. So our king is 10 for this problem. Let's start with 10 minus six. And what's my last number that I'm missing? Four. Very nice. And then we have one more subtraction equation. Oh, we're subtracting, subtracting again, so 10 comes first. Now, last time we did 10 minus six, so this time we must do 10 minus four. We don't want our equations to all be the same. We want to have four different equations.